miracle. It's a miracle. And the projects that have been offered beyond our expectations, the service that has been given to this city, specifically this city. Exactly. <laughs> unfathomable <laughs> so we came here to give thanks to give thanks to George Soros wherever he is whatever he's doing and to all the other many donors that have contributed over millions of dollars for us to do this work here in Baltimore now look if OSI had its way they would create a feature-length film that showcased all of the projects and all of the people, the staff, the partners, the fellows. They can't make a film, so they did a six minute video. <laughs> and so, if we can take a look at it now. For 25 years, OSI Baltimore has had the real privilege of supporting our city and community by investing in leaders, coalitions, and organizations that work each day to make Baltimore more equitable, more just, and more prosperous for all of its residents. From justice reform to voting rights, health equity, to even economic justice and access to capital, our supported leaders and organizations are really on the front lines, working each day to transform our city and make it a better place. Thank you for your ongoing support of OSI, and thank you for your love and support of Baltimore. When I think of OSI, I think of the words bold, courageous, social investor. I think of community, investment, and diversity. Specifically in today's society, to have someone one with division, and then to have an organization such as this that is so driven towards social justice. So the first word that would come to my mind would be awesome. OSI has really helped to shape and model what it means to be a progressive funder. And it has actually normalized a lot of necessary social justice issues across different com uh, communities and conversations. OSI Baltimore comes at the work uniquely because they come at it in solidarity and in partnership with the grantees. But that is a very difficult, nuanced relationship. And when the staff at OSI Baltimore enters the room, they are entering in service to the people of Baltimore. I feel like OSI formed community in a way and provided a lot more structure and support beyond just the funding. Open society literally is the reason why Haley City Baltimore is able to exist that relationship has turned into something so much more. And we're able to continue working with Open Society to expand legislation um, that connects government and community and healing trauma across cities. It can feel like there's a lot of talk about what people want or the world we wanna make. And OSI unapologetically has always just made it happen, set up things in a way that I really feel like it made it hard for people to fail. Never did I feel alone and or isolated or I couldn't pick up the phone and get some guidance, some direction and some support. Just the OSI team um, has truly, truly been really transformative in helping us grow and build. I feel like the city acknowledges the work that OSI does because they listen a little bit more because y'all have been on the forefront of making sure they listen to a lot of things. We started our 10th cohort of 15 people, family members and allies in recovery, navigating through their peer recovery coach training. And to see those family members on screen and share that experience with them, listening to their, their stories, that's what OSI does, creates change. When you look at the over 100 Open Society Community Fellows, these are folks that are on the ground doing amazing work with children, doing amazing art projects, school-based work. People are doing uh, criminal justice reform. 
These are the true champions in communities. We launched collectively in 2019 with our Black Futures Fund. And that is a no strings attached grant. So that's really a way to really amplify and expose so many organizations doing great work. So this is really to promote participatory trust-based grant making where those on the ground are the decision makers. Everything that we received in, we were just putting back in community. We had no one on staff. And so the investment from OSI really helped us to begin to build our own infrastructure and capacity to greater serve on Baltimore. I don't even know all of the different areas in which they were supportive. I thought that it was just like people use drugs and how to be helpful with that. And then I learned that there was like something with, with jail support. And I was like, wait a minute, they, there are all these like little pockets. I hadn't realized like how big they were and how much work they were doing in the city. I think OSI has been incredibly generous in giving us the space to, you know, to stumble and fall on our face when we when we need to. But, but you know, we always get back up. And so now it's been over a decade and, you know, the, the growth is continuous. And I think, you know, hopefully moving forward, that's the foundation that OSI has helped us build. We are better because OSI existed. We are much more equipped, <laughs> you know, to grow efforts and programs and ideas and innovation that has certainly helped our city but that will continue to help. You can have an idea, but if you're not equipped to actually facilitate it and to maintain it and grow it, then it's just an idea. You know, as a Baltimore, I'm just grateful that this foundation in New York City took such an interest in our community for so long. <laughs> and I'm hopeful that the civic leaders here and around the country can pick up uh, the baton where OSF is, uh, is it off. OSI is leaving a message that's loud and clear. Continue to support these organizations. Even though we're not here, the work still needs to get done. Energy doesn't die. That's a fixed law, right? You can't create it, you can't kill it, right? So the energy that OSI has already established right here in Baltimore, it is still here. It, it has nothing to do with the brick and mortar. It has everything to do with the vision, with the spirit, with the energy. OSI is still here, it will always be here. It will always be us.